Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here, coming at you again with another Dino A Day review series, and we are on to probably, if it's not the most popular tame in the game, it's certainly up there, the Pteranodon. Now, this guy right here is probably one of the earliest tames that people push for. Um, even late game, they're super used. It's one of those unique tames that not only is it usable from like the first moment you start this game, but it's also useful at the very end because of its raiding capabilities and defense capabilities. Um, so it certainly ranks right up there for one of the most important tames, but everyone does know how important it is. So they kind of, you know, focus on these guys pretty quickly, Pteranodons. Now, if you haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel, that'd be much appreciated. I do appreciate all the support you guys have given over this time, and we are working our way through this Dino A Day review list. So, let's go ahead and talk about what he's good for. So, the Pteranodon has a bunch of useful things. Now, if this were an X Pteranodon, it would have those 88 levels to plop into it. Uh, so, they do have the ability to actually level more, but which is, you know, pretty cool. But well, that's my personal opinion. So there's four major stats for these things. They used to have movement speed, does not anymore. Health, stamina, weight, melee. It depends on what you're doing. If you want to do something called C-spinning somebody's base, which basically means you're trying to get into their base past their turrets just by C-spinning, you want to crank up that health to almost maximum because then you want to survive getting through, you know. But that's your choice. So you got to decide that one. Stamina, very important because low stamina can be quite painful because picking, barrel rolling, anything you want to do, it's going to cause you stamina, so you want to rank that up. Weight is also really important because if you have super low weight, even just harvesting a body will slow you down heavily, so that's important. I've also seen some people get some pretty crazy melee stats on their pteranodons, which basically means with a C-spin or a normal attack, you're doing a load of damage to things. So... Just to show you some comparisons, health goes up pretty quickly. Um, I'm gonna drink this one to 20, and that's plenty. I'm not. I don't normally use these for C spinning. I don't like it. That's me. Now, stamina, pretty important. I like to get mine to about a thousand before I'm like you know comfortable with it. A thousand is a pretty solid number. I've seen people go up to 1500 to 2000. Depends if they want these as scouting teams. Really crank that stamina up if you do want to scout with these things. It's up to you. Uh, and then we've got weight and melee. I like to have my weight around 300, but that's just because, you know, that's me. I don't try and use these things for, like, super load carrying, but I know people can crank them up to 400 pretty easily. Uh, melee goes up pretty exponentially, and you can kind of, like, toss the rest of your points into that aspect. And you get some cool, cool, cool melee. Now, this guy right here. So... You take off and land with space bar. He has a normal attack, which is this right here. You can see that. He's got a pick attack where he sticks his feet forward, and it's a huge range because it, like, as long as he has that like pick animation going, that's how long that pick lasts. And you'll notice it drains quite a bit of stamina, though. So you want to be careful about that. Just you know, so you know, um, he can only pick small things. I guess it's this a he or she? Maybe appropriate. It is a he. Uh, he can only pick small things, so if you're going by some stuff, notice how I pick this up. It kind of holds it in a weird render box, but oh well. Very popular for picking things, like if you're going up against somebody in PvP, because of their maneuverability, you can see I can pretty much turn any corner I want. And people that are talented with these things just like, you know, do these funky paths, and then they turn around and do that 180, like that right there, and pick you while flying backwards. It's a very popular technique. If you're right next to somebody, you literally just do that and boom, picked. Um, that's a very popular technique where people literally are just doing a 180 pick and it counts the entire way so you can really surprise some people. Um, so I encourage you to use that 180 pick strategy. It's very, very useful. Uh, you'll notice though, because Stam can be a problem on these things, uh, the Stam battle tends to win if you're having a PvP battle with somebody on a Pteranodon. So using less stuff is always a good idea. Less of that stamina use is a very, very good idea. Now, they do have one more attack, that C-spin. Now, C-spin, what is it? It's actually really nice. Um, a normal attack, just so you can see the damage it does, 128. Now, if I was to C-spin this thing, 358. So it's a double increase right there, basically. Sometimes you can get a little bit more. Um, it depends entirely on what you're rocking. C-spin drains a ton of stamina. The 
You'll notice by looking at my stamina bar, every time I do it, we're talking like a 15-20% decrease in stam, which is a huge difference. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's something that you should you know, watch. But stamina can be very, very useful on these things, so if you want to crank it up more than I did, be my guest. That's totally cool. So, everything you're seeing right now is something that I use Pteranodons for. I like Pteranodons a lot, however, I think I prefer Griffins more, but that's me. Um, Pteranodons do have that saddle, so they take that reduced damage whenever you have a saddle, and a lot of people have really good Pteranodon saddles, which basically means they can do this thing called C-spinning. So let's say I'm running at a base, and there's only a couple of turrets, and I see something where I can hide behind those turrets. If I get really close to the range and then C-spin, you cover a lot of distance really quickly and you can get past turret range and into somebody's base. It's a very common technique and it's used to get behind somebody's turret wall typically. Stuff like that. However, another useful thing these Pteranodons are good for is getting eggs of wyverns. Now, this is the Ragnarok, not hidden, it's called the Sanctuary, the Wyvern Sanctuary. And it's a very common place that people use that know this map pretty well to get wyvern eggs. Um, and I'll show you how to do it. Basically, you just want to get out or in and out of this zone as quick as possible. Man, look at some of these wyverns. They are so pretty. This this Easter event still going on, technically. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go full speed into this little scar. Grab an egg. And again, what you want to be really careful of is this egg will weigh down your pteranodon heavily. So be very careful with that because you want to make sure you have very minimal stuff on you. Um, and you want to try and stay away from wyverns because you have a much better turn radius. Uh, wyverns do not do very well against pteranodons. The only wyvern you want to watch out for, the lightning wyvern. Um, so that's, you know, kind of that. Uh, what you can do to be careful, and that's why I like the sanctuary over the Ragnarok other side wyvern scar. This little lip right here allows you to trap wyverns really easily and uh, run from them. So take that for what you will. Um, so basically, you'll go up in here, and this is where all the wyvern eggs are located. I don't know if they're in, sometimes in solo player there's an issue with spawning of these eggs. So there might, oh, there's one, never mind. Got one. So what you want to do, find an egg that you like, check the area, because you'll notice there's a couple of wyverns falling around. As soon as they realize I take this egg, boom, I am in big trouble. Land, please. There we go. So make sure your pteranodon is close by. You can see there's an egg right there. I'm going to yoink the egg. All them wyverns are going to come for me because they're going to be pissed. And what you do, that is a dangerous one. You want to be careful of that guy. You can see spin out of their range. I would really encourage you to stay nice and high, and I'll show you why in a second here. You're going to go ahead and go down real quick. And then boom, we are outside. And this is why I like this over the wyvern scar. You'll have a wyverns to deal with on the outside, but everything that was just chasing me on the inside is stuck inside this uh, little area. Um, I don't think I can do enough damage to this wyvern to really kill it. But if you're good with these things, you can kind of... Alright, I have no idea what happened there. I just couldn't stop coughing for a second. My bad. Uh, so I'll go ahead and you know, mute that part out. But oh well. So, on the outside, you will have some wyverns to deal with, but because in this area you've got so many little nooks and crannies and they have such a huge turn radius, it is very easy to lose these wyverns um, inside like the little components around here. Now, I usually go ahead and go up high, and you can see I lost one already, and then if you stick to these corners and uh, hug them nice and tight, I lost that one, we're just looking at one more. Keep an eye on your stamina, but you can usually drop these wyverns off pretty quickly. Um, and if not, use everything to your advantage. Ooh, I accidentally got one back. Um, and you can kind of go through the trees. The trees are a great way to lose wyverns um, and sea spinning as well. So we're going to go ahead and go over to these trees, and boom, we will be safe. Wyverns cannot make it through the trees very easily, so... Uh, we will eventually lose them. It's just a process. And they will attach to another victim nearby if they lose that render range. And we should be good now. Yep. They have gotten bored. Um, so this Pteranodon is a great way to get your first Wyvern egg. They can outrun them if you're careful and use your C-spin. Notice how I'm low on Stam now. That's why you want to keep an eye on that. And then land. Now, 
they do not have a very high health stat, so if you do get caught, you're in trouble. But then again, I mean, that's the point of going in there is to get a wyvern egg. So, you know, you got what you came out for. So it doesn't really matter. Up to you. Now, another popular thing these uh, pteranodons are used for, they can use to carry things. But you can also fit them in much smaller locations. If you've never seen this type of area, this is over on Ragnarok. I don't even know technically what it's called, the ruin, something like that. Um, they can get you to some pretty sneaky little base locations and just like, you know, go into areas people don't know very well because they're so small and they can fly. Uh, so you can go inside an area like this, put your stuff on your pteranodon in a PvP style server, and you know, hide your pteranodon up in here where people can't build it anyways. Which can mean that you are, you know, completely safe for the day. Uh, and your pteranodon will just like store your stuff in here for you. And not many people like check this kind of area because it's super hard to see. And uh, you can't build in here anyways. So pretty cool little spot. Uh, serve as great loot storage and you know there's lots of little locations you can store a pteranodon and uh, people would have no idea you're there um, even if you're looking for my pteranodon it'd be hard to notice it because it kind of blends in and typically people aren't huge jerks when it comes to pteranodons they kind of like let them be um, but again tons of little potential for these guys great overall early game team great late game team i really encourage you to use them they are amazing creatures. Alright, anyways, hopefully this video helps you out and teach out.